Excellent. Uh, so, uh, Luis, it's great to, to have you uh, in conversation, if only virtually today. And um, you have mentioned to me that you've done some recent really interesting reading. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Yes, Matt. Uh, um, I was just reading an article, actually uh, a couple of articles, uh, um, one uh, from a team at Columbia University, um, which was talking about how our uh, perception of time is generated by our brain. And um, it talks about how uh, our, our brain sometimes can uh, make time expand uh, or compress. Uh, of course, not real time, uh, real physical time continues to flow at its usual unrelenting pace. But the way we perceive that time to flow mm -hmm. can, can suddenly become lengthier or, or shorter. And, and I'm sure you, as a, as a historian of, of physics and science, you, you remember the old quote from, from Einstein. I think somebody was asking him, perhaps with some skepticism, about the theory of special relativity. And he said, Einstein, Einstein said, there's nothing to be skeptical about. Just compare what it's like talking to, to a beautiful interlocutor. And time seems to go very quickly. And what it's like, I don't know what he used in his example, was it to put the hand on a burning stove or, or to be talking to a very boring interlocutor, but, but perceived time seems to become much lengthier and tedious, or it seems to go by very, very swiftly, depending on subjective contacts or subjective factors, you know? So, what, and, okay, so that's, I mean, I, I, I certainly understand uh, what you're getting at, and I, I do remember that Einstein quote. But tell me a little bit about what the upshot of this might be for us now that all of us uh, in Budapest, around the world, we're all in self-quarantine. Well, the upshot, upshot of it is that um, we know from research, this, this is not esoteric uh, in any way, it's, it's absolutely a known fact, mm -hmm. that one can manipulate the perception of subjective time mm -hmm. pharmacologically. Uh, so different substances uh, um, that affect the brain can expand and dilate or compress our perception of time. And civilizations have known this all along. In fact, many, many cultures, when you look at medical anthropology, introduce uh, these types of hallucinogenic substances into, for example, uh, religious rites or into, for example, initiation rites. And so the uh, point one is that uh, um, uh, certain substances can change your perception of time. But, and here's the point, these substances which naturally occur in, in, in the world uh, can in fact uh, do that because they emulate the actions of substances that are already in our brain and that are produced in our brain by the part of our brain which deals with emotions. What we call the limbic system is constantly producing these hormones and these chemical messengers in reaction to events around us. But for that part of the brain, our contact with others is very salient. It stands mm -hmm. out very, very importantly. Mm -hmm. So when in a situation like ours presently, our contact with the outside world or the pace of that contact suddenly changes very dramatically, then it's gonna be unsurprising that that will produce chemical changes in the brain, particularly in the part of the brain that generates these, let's say, pacemaker substances. And that would be the limbic system it's deeply influenced by social interactions. It's influenced by other things as well, like for example, light. And we know this, that when we suddenly get on an airplane and fly to another uh, time zone, this, the sudden change in the pattern of exposure of light wreaks havoc. We feel uh, jet lagged, we say, and the jet lag basically is our body is still occupying a different, uh, uh, biorhythms, so to speak, the circadian rhythms are mm -hmm. changed. Well, 
This happens a little bit as well, and this is the uptake message. It, this happens a little bit as well when all of a sudden we are uprooted from our habitual social interactions. Chemically, it will produce changes in our brain and that's gonna feel a very warped, perhaps, sense of time. So let me, let me continue then. Uh, in other words, the, the, the self-imposed isolation that we all are now facing, uh, which limits our social contacts, and our usual social interaction is having an influence on our limbic system. Understood. Yes. And how, um, what are different ways we might feel different because of that? So what are some of the ways that any of us, students and professors and so on, who are now in our apartments all day, um, that ways we might feel that we shouldn't be surprised by if, if we, for example, are we gonna get more sleep or less sleep? Are we are we gonna be more anxious, et cetera? What, what are some of the things we should look for? All right, well, to put it very practically, uh, thankfully now that the classes are bringing some structure back into our schedules, we have these uh, goalposts uh, um, that kind of make uh, for a pacemaker, sort of, our day mm -hmm. is, is, is metronomed more regularly and more like it was before the crisis. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, because of the video interactions, we have some kind of a, um, um, a, a more, shall we say, stabilized um, stimulation of our limbic system. So the part of our brain that controls emotions and all the chemistry that goes with that, and therefore also our perception of time. Mm -hmm. But it's still not 100% what it was before. And so it shouldn't alarm us or surprise us if sometimes our sleep patterns are a little bit weird, mm -hmm. if we experience some degree of hypersomnia, so sleepiness, or the opposite, uh, restlessness. Um, also, it shouldn't come as a huge surprise if sometimes time seems to go by very, very quickly. Oh my God, I started looking at this YouTube video and a couple of others, uh, and all of a sudden three hours went by, four hours, or you know, the, the afternoon went by. Mm -hmm. And this kind of uh, sense of time went by very quickly and I squandered it. It would be slightly different if I was having the, the normal, I call them pacemaker interactions with all the chemical consequences that they entail with people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then what kind of advice would you give students, for example, in this situation uh, in order for them um, to, be, uh, to continue to be, to be productive and also uh, to feel reasonably well about themselves? Okay, I guess the first thing I would say is don't be alarmed if things feel strange mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, they are strange and you are, you are not responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So limit your responsibility. You didn't do anything wrong and the crisis that we're going through is not uh, your fault. Also the feelings that you get of distorted time or time not being used optimally or, or time not flowing naturally. That's also not something wrong with your mind. On the contrary, it might just be that your mind, like everybody else's, is calibrated somewhat by the pace of social interactions, right? Mm -hmm. And the emotional temperature that comes with that. In the absence of that, you're maybe gonna feel some anxieties and that's gonna make some things feel faster and that's gonna make some things feel slower. Mm -hmm. So I guess the first thing to say, is be prepared for a same sense of temporal weirdness, right? Just imagine that you, you, you are in a different time zone, like when you're jet lagged, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except now we're collectively jet lagged as it right. were, and it has nothing to do with air travel. <laughs> uh, or perhaps it does, it has everything to do. <laughs> some, with, some of us are jet lagged, not you and I, but others of us. That's um, right. That's and what right. about, what about other, what are some of the things that students ought to, to do kind of proactively to keep themselves um, productive and uh, reasonably happy in, in these unusual circumstances? Well, I would say um, try to create stable routines, huh? mm -hmm. okay? Um, so obviously uh, showing up for your classes 
at the, the, the appropriate punctual times is going to help not just your academics, but it's going to help you emotionally to, to regain a sense of normality and structure and control. It might even help your, your sleep cycle. So increasingly, what a lot of people are also doing is they're having virtual dinner parties okay mm -hmm. or, or or virtual uh, drinking parties uh, although i would not recommend uh, overdoing it with that but you know sitting down mm -hmm. with a friend on skype having a chat having a beer with somebody on skype as you would do ordinarily um that pace of dialogue where you're listening and then you're talking and the other person's reacting or the person is uh, gesticulating etc this is something that uh, helps your body secrete dopamine and oxytocin mm -hmm. and substances like this that generate a feeling of uh, normality. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I see. Um, well, listen, Luis, thank you so very much. And um, I tell you what, if you have a moment, I would invite you to a virtual coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so thank you. And, um, uh, I want to encourage students, or for that matter, faculty members and others who might see this video, that uh, more are coming. And um, if you have any questions about the particulars today, uh, I, I encourage you, and if, if Professor Murillo agrees, to reach out to, to Luis Murillo and, um, and to uh, take care of yourselves just the way that, uh, that Luis has uh, suggested. So my thanks, Luis. Thank you, Matt, for this opportunity. Mm -hmm.